All right. We'll start out here today. I'll start with the land acknowledgement, and then we'll hear the Palm Sunday uh, gospel reading and then process inside. We begin this service by acknowledging and paying respects to the traditional custodians of this land, the Atfalidi, the northern band of the Kalapuya, whose ancestors are now members of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde. We extend respect to their elders, both past and present, and join with our indigenous siblings in caring for this place, this land that they call home. A reading according to the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied to a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt, the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road. Others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were following were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is, coming, is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything and it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12, the gospel of our Lord. Pave the way with branches, Jesus is coming. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus is coming. Hosanna to the Prince of Peace. Hosanna, Jesus is coming. Hosanna to the Prince of Peace. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Hosanna. Jesus is coming, Hosanna to the Prince of Peace. is coming, Hosanna to the Prince of Peace. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Hosanna. Jesus is coming, Hosanna to the Prince of Peace. Hosanna, Jesus is coming, Hosanna to the Prince of Peace. A little bit different this Sunday. That is how it is for Palm Sunday. We are at the end of our Lenten journey. Friends, welcome to worship today. Welcome to those who are joining us online as well. Um, worship will look a little bit different, as you've already noticed. Um, we'll hear a longer uh, passion reading today. It's often referred to as Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. Uh, it's where we hear a longer reading of the whole passion story, the events of Holy Week that we'll hear today. Um, we will also have Holy Week services, so Monday, Thursday, Good Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, I'll be announcing that later as well, so just a, a preview of the announcements, mini preview. Um, we'll have a, a 
passion reading later that will be kind of a multi-sensory experience. So screens, reading, some music as well. So uh, something to look forward to. Um, that's all the announcements right now. So we'll go ahead and keep going with our greeting and uh, beginning of worship today. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for the sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Friends, here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, and washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. His affection never wearies and his mercy never ends. He reminds me every morning I am still your faithful friend. He is good to those who seek him. I will wait for him to bless and the Lord will His affection never wearies, and His mercy never ends. He reminds me every morning, I am still your faithful friend. He is good to those who seek Him. I will wait for Him to bless, and the Lord will may be seated, and we'll now hear the scripture readings for today. Our first reading is from Isaiah 50, 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher 
that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled on the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put, I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will, de who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. Our second reading is from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in the human likeness, and being found in the f human form, he humbled himself, and he became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every name should bend, every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now I'll invite the children to come forward for today's children's message. Good morning, friends. Quiet today. Good morning. You still waking up? Still morning? Yeah. All right. Well, we're at the end of Lent here, and we have something that looks like a little bit different. What, could, what would you imagine this was? How would, how would you describe this setting today? A road, yeah, or a path. And what, do you, what else do you notice about it? Yep. There's fern, yeah, there's branches. Yep. Because, why? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, in the gospel story, we heard that when Jesus entered Jerusalem, they laid down the branches and they laid down cloaks. Yes. We call it Palm Sunday. These aren't exactly palms. And in Mark's gospel, interestingly enough, it says that they lay down branches, not palms. So we have, we have branches, probably palms. But what else do you notice about it? Yeah, leading to the cross. From where? Yeah, from the font to the cross. And this is really our Lenten journey because Lent starts with this story of Jesus after he gets baptized by John. He goes off into the wilderness and then he gets some followers and it's, it does kind of the amazing Jesus things, the stories that we hear about. And then it ends with the cross. And that's what this is kind of in preparation for Holy Week as we lead up to the events of Holy Week, Good Friday, and right before Easter, it's the story of Jesus going to the cross. And you're right, you said this, this looks like a pathway. Would you describe it as a smooth pathway? Yes. Yeah, does it look smooth? No, this looks pretty rough, huh? Yeah, like if you were walking this blindfolded, you would need some help, right? You might, you might trip. Yeah, it's kind of rough. It's a kind of a reminder that you know, these, were, these are some pretty rough rocks here, that the pathway to the cross wasn't easy for Jesus, and it's not easy for anyone, really, who kind of, as we think about the suffering in life. Can you imagine, like, as a person, you could walk this. Like, it's not smooth, but you could walk it, right, from here to there, right? Now, imagine if you were an ant or a little tiny bug. That would take you ages, and it'd feel like the journey of a lifetime, Right? up and down through these rocks. And sometimes that's how it is with suffering. Sometimes sufferings in life seem like, oh, I can, I can manage my way through this. I can walk this path. But sometimes they might be a little bit more 
than what we, we think they might be. But the story of Easter is a story that Jesus has gone before us. Jesus knows that way. So whatever um, hard times we're going through, we have to keep remembering Jesus knows this. Jesus knows this, sees me, and Jesus is with me. And hopefully that gives us comfort, that gives us peace. Well, I have something for you because all of you were here for our kid night. Remember when we had the kid night, the beginning of March? It was like the beginning, towards the beginning of Lent. And what did we make? What was one of the things we made? Yeah, the Easter gardens, right? Yeah. So we took some, some dirt and rocks, made some Easter gardens and a clay pot to look like the tomb. Well, I said I'd have something to add for that, and here it is. This is some, some seed. So you could take this home and add it to your Easter garden, okay? Alex, you can share with your brother there too, okay? Paul and Sky. yep. So add that. Water it. Well, first water it. Make sure that soil is, is nice and moist, okay? Water it. Add this, mix the soil up a bit so it kind of covers the seed, and then, and then keep an eye on it. Keep it moist all week, okay? And by Easter, we should see that it's starting to grow, okay? It's kind of a good reminder of Holy Week that that new life comes at the end of it, all right? So you can add, add that to your gardens at home. Take that home and add that. Okay, I'm going to say a prayer for us today, and then we're, you're not going to go down to Sunday school today, Okay? Stay up here because we have a, a kind of a presentation that, that we'll be part of, all right? Okay. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for being near to us during our times of struggle. And God, as we pay attention this week to the story of Jesus, a story of suffering, may we not lose sight that you are near to those who suffer. Help us to, sh to reach out to those who might be suffering in our lives as well, to offer words of kindness, words of comfort, and always to be mindful that your love is given to us each day. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can head back to your seats. Why are you doing this is the question that stands out for, for me in today's Palm Sunday story. And it's such an odd question. It's an exchange that doesn't really move the story along. And I often wonder why Mark even included it in his gospel. Mark is the gospel writer known for kind of concise descriptions. It's using this economy of words. Why would he include this minor interaction? And as I spent some time turning that question over, I noticed that it goes beyond the story itself. Jesus is giving his disciples specific instructions. Go to the village. You will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. You know, it's a question I imagine the disciples asking of one another as well. When they thought back about where their life would have been if they hadn't started following this Jesus character. Why are you doing this? I can hear them ask that at the dinner table after hearing one of Jesus' obscure parables or as the tensions are rising between Jesus and certain religious leaders of the time. And they might be wondering what they're getting into and if they were ready for the backlash. Why are you doing this? It's a question that resonates with us as well. Followers of Jesus along the way in a very different context, in a very different place. And maybe one of the reasons Mark includes this question, this dialogue, is to invite the audience to turn the question back onto Jesus. 
as he describes his planned entrance into Jerusalem. His followers would have known that Jesus is obviously trying to make a point. Because if we go right back into that story, it's almost Passover, which in Jesus' time is a very politically volatile event. It's a festival of the Jewish people, a festival where they remember and retell the story of how God led them out of Egypt, how God rescued them from the oppressive government of Pharaoh. So for the Jewish people living under a Roman occupation, this festival would have imposed upon them that reality of where they live, that they are every day in an occupied land, that they're, that they're subjects of the Roman Empire. And it wasn't uncommon in Jesus' time for riots to break out. In anticipation that tensions would rise, at this time, the, ro- the local Roman governor of Judea, he would ride in from Caesarea, a town Uh, not too far away, more of the coastal city. And he would process into the city with his soldiers as a show of force, hoping to intimidate any would-be protesters and remind them who is in charge. So when Jesus comes riding into town, it's likely most people would have made the connection to that Roman governor riding in on the other side and would conclude that this is a subversive political demonstration. But as the events of Holy Week would later reveal, not everyone was in agreement with the political point Jesus was making. So maybe the gospel writer is inviting the audience to apply this question to Jesus. Why are you doing this? This is dangerous. This attracts attention. Who are you trying to anger? Why are you putting yourself at risk? Why are you putting us at risk? What does this mean for us? This is not what we signed up for. We didn't expect that our lives would be messed with like this. That's what it means to follow Jesus. It means your life will be messed with. So maybe Jesus is trying to say to them, don't look away now. Pay attention. I got this. I got you. Well, once again, we're invited to contemplate the passion story. So I invite our storytellers to come forward now and we'll begin when they're ready. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, at evening Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, the one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, 
and all of them drank from it. Jesus said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Go to dark Gethsemane, all who feel the tempter's power, your Redeemer's conflict see, watch with him one bitter hour, turn not from his griefs away, learn from Jesus Christ to They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. Jesus came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. Oh, sacred head now wounded with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown. Oh, sacred head, what glory, what bliss till now was thine, yet for All of them deserted, deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. 
Then Jesus, they took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. What language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow, thy pity without end? While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked, them, asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, 
he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. Please stand as you are able. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled the sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come down to take him, to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw that saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, 
Truly, this man was God's son. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ. be seated. Love. 
Sandra will lead us in our prayers this morning. Um, there will be a time for you to add any prayer requests that you have as well. Just raise your hand and we'll make sure that microphone uh, makes its way around to you. Uh, the petitions will end. Hear us, O oh God, and uh, please respond uh, together. Your mercy is great. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Saved. Establish peace and justice among the nations, especially in Palestine and Israel, Myanmar, Iraq, Haiti, Russia and Ukraine, and South Sudan. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. For these and all the prayers of our hearts, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For all who are recovering, rebuilding, and grieving after severe storms and tornadoes. For those who are starving and injured, waiting for aid in Gaza. For our Muslim neighbors as they observe Ramadan. For this Lenten season as we move into Holy Week. For those who have suffered from gun violence. For our policymakers as they make important decisions about health care education, safety, and justice. For all those participating in the global Gaza ceasefire pilgrimage, hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. <clears throat> Blessed one, our times are in your hands. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We'll now collect the tithes and offerings for God's continued mission and work in and through this community.
Please stand as you are able, and we join together in the offering prayer. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's... Well, in his passion and grace, Christ continues to offer himself to us. And we remember again the meal that he shared with his disciples that is extended to us today. We pray. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock, and our water who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered, gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, as you come forward to commune today, we have uh, regular wheat wafers and also gluten-free wafers. If you prefer a gluten-free option, uh, just let me know, that's here. Um, in the, on the larger tray are cups of wine. The smaller tray has cups of juice for those who have that preference. We'll start with the music team uh, and Sandra will go from this side of the room to this side, coming here, out this aisle, back to your seat and around. Hopefully that is good for traffic flow. Uh, Sandra will be over at the prayer kneeler. If anyone would just like someone to pray with them, you can come uh, at any time while we're doing communion, and Sandra will be more than happy to pray with you. Friends, this is bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. All is ready. Come. His affection never wearies, and His mercy never ends. He reminds me every morning, I 
His affection never wearies, and His mercy never ends. He reminds me every morning, I am still your faithful friend. He is good to those who seek Him. I will wait for Him to bless. Oh uh-huh. 
pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. Thank you. Okay. All right, please stand as you are able for our blessing and our closing song. Beloved, you are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. May God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and may God give you peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna. Jesus is coming, pave the way with branches. Jesus is coming, Hosanna, Hosanna. Debts are forgiven, Hosanna. Debts are forgiven, pave the way with branches. Debts are forgiven, Hosanna. Hosanna, Jesus is coming. Friends, go in peace. Share with your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Jesus is coming, Hosanna.